Not too many people are more beloved here in Philadelphia than my next guest. Played for the Birds from 1996 to 2008. Went to nine Pro Bowls in his great NFL career. And now is an analyst at ESPN. And his number 20 actually hangs in Lincoln Financial Field as it was retired a few years ago. And that's Brian Dawkins. Brian, it's Zach Gelp here. How you doing? Thanks for a few minutes. Hey, no problem. How's everything? Brian, I'm doing great. I appreciate a few minutes today. And this is the official student radio station of Temple University. I actually do the play-by-play for the football team. And it's my understanding that you got a chance uh, last year to talk to Matt Rule's squad. What did you tell them as they look to build for the future here on North Broad Street? Just being able to fight through adversity and knowing that adversity builds when you allow it to run its course. But at the same time, to continue to pursue what you need to pursue in the midst of that adversity so that you can learn from it. And then plan for one another, um, plan with a diligence and a, and a, and a fervor to uh, push through whatever comes your way together. And when you do that, you see you played on some great Eagles teams and appeared in an abundance of NFC Championship games. And you didn't win them all, but when you finally broke through and got that victory in 04 and 05 to go to Jacksonville and play the Patriots in the Super Bowl, how relieved were you guys to punch that ticket to Jacksonville? Well, I mean, to finally get a chance to go there was obviously a goal, but the main goal was to win it all. But to finally push through those walls to finally get there was a huge accomplishment for the team and I know I was you know jumping up and down to have that opportunity and falling short so many times but at the same time just like I was talking about Temple you know we had our we had our our, our times of failure but each year we pick one another up and we continue to push on until we finally got that chance and we did it together it also starts with the foundation. You guys had such a great foundation in Philadelphia, uh, led by your head coach and Andy Reid and your defensive coordinator, Jim Johnson. Uh, when you take a look back at those two coaches, how much do they mean to your career and the success that you had? Oh, they were huge to my professional career, but this was to those two. I mean, Andy Reid uh, was huge and instrumental. Um, obviously, Jim Johnson was the ministry instrumental in the way he was me, but you know, Ray Rose and Emmett Thomas even before. They came there. They're the ones who brought me there. They're the ones who believe in the small and safe from Clemson to bring it, that bring you there to have a chance to play the National Football League. So, um, you know, each, I can say that I've been blessed with some uh, tremendous coaches along the way. We're talking to Brian Dawkins, former Philadelphia Eagles, numbers 20, is retired at Lincoln Financial Field, now does a fantastic job for ESPN. And Brian, uh, you look back at your career, two of the players, yourself and also Donovan McNabb, now have their numbers retired at Lincoln Financial Field. How special was that moment to get your number retired and then also be a part of Donovan McNabb's ceremony when he got his number raised to the rafters? Well, that's a tremendous thing. That's something that, you know, I never thought about never happened to have my number retired by a professional football team and to have it happen the way it happened the way that uh, you know Jeff Lurie and the uh, uh, Eagles organization put it together was a spectacular event and uh, something that, I, that I'll always remember it um, you know to be a part of Donovan's to see him get his number retired and to, to be a, a part of that a, a friend of mine and someone that uh, you know we would not have done the things that we did and go to the heights that we went, you know, had not we drafted Donovan in that uh, uh, first round that year, in my opinion. You look back at your career, and you spent it with two teams, the Eagles and also the Broncos, and it's NFL free agency right now. We see players all around the league uh, changing teams. How tough was it to leave Philadelphia when you signed on in Denver? It was real tough. It was like a morning experience, the way that I look at it. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of emotions ran through me, but at the same time, I know I had to move as quick as possible to be able to be what I needed to be for my teammates in Denver. The same things that my teammates in Philadelphia depended on me for. It's the same things that uh, my teammates in Denver were um, were expecting. So, um, as as much as you know, that side of me was hurting. I had to make sure that I presented myself in such a way as to help my teammates there in Denver. Let's look at the current Eagles roster right now. Uh, they had a successful first year under Chip Kelly, who has big shoes uh, to fill, uh, replacing Andy Reid as he's now in Kansas City. Uh, they went out and made a trade today to get Darren Sproles to add him to an already explosive offense. Uh, what does Sproles bring to the Eagles offense? Another weapon to have to defend. I think that Chip Kelly last year, Coach Kelly, what he did is you have to continue to cover the entire field the way that he runs his offense. You have to you know, try to contain the running attack. 
Um, you have to defend the bubble screens to the different receivers. You have to, you know, uh, cover receivers up the field. So he's trying to make you control. He's trying to make you um, search the whole field and see who's going to get the football. And when you have weapons at every position, not just a guy, but when you have weapons at every position at the defense, now who do I take away? I, I can't lean one way or the other. Everybody has to play honest. And when you have everybody trying to play honest, you have a lot of one-on-one matches, one-on-one matchups. And what you want is a guy at a position to win his one-on-one matchups the majority of the time. And when you put Spoles with this offense, now you have another guy that if you take away Shady, you take away, you know, Mike from it, you take away Cooper, if you take away all these other guys, <laughs> now you got to take away Spoles maybe in the slot. And he's going to make a guy miss majority of the time in one-on-one matchups. Let's take a look at the quarterback. They have a lot of trust in his, in him, and it's going to be his first full year at it from the start of training camp, and they're bringing back supporting pieces, whether it was re-signing a Jason Kelsey, uh, bringing back a Riley Cooper and a Jeremy Macklin, and uh, giving an extension to Jason Peters. You take a look at Nick Foles. What do you think he has to improve on to take that next step? Well, I think the thing that Nick probably has to um, get better at, and I'm pretty sure he knows that, is when to get rid of the football. Not just throwing it up for grabs because he did an excellent job of not throwing interceptions, but sometimes he holds on to the ball and takes the sack that he does not does not need to outside of the pocket to get rid of the football. Um, you know, if the guy's right in front of you and it's an easy completion, take it right there instead of holding it and waiting on something down the field to happen in certain situations. So, but on one end of it, I'm fine with it if he continues to do it the way that he's doing it and not turning the football over, but I still would like him to be able to take advantage of what he sees um, and just getting rid of the football, lining up to play the next snap instead of putting his team, taking them from a, um, a potential, uh, you know, third and four, and now it's a third and 15 because you took that sack. And you look at Nick Foles, he's a young quarterback, has a high apex ahead of him, has a chance to do a lot of great things in the National Football League, and they're giving him that trust. They're going to name him the starter, and it looks like Michael Vick is going to be on his way out of town, but not too many people thought last year that Nick Foles would have led the Philadelphia Eagles to the playoffs. When you look at that experience and gaining it at such a young age, it has to be valuable, and there's only so much more that he could you know, look at and maybe learn off that playoff loss to the Saints. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just the whole season for him, my opinion. I think that um, another thing that uh, Chip did was he dispelled the rumor that you have to have a running quarterback in his offense. Um, I think, you know, uh, Nick did a good job at times, game, maybe game in three yards here, five yards there to keep him honest. But I think that that dispelled a lot of this defensive coordinators come in and know that they have to game plan against them the same way that they did against it. They still gain some yards. But I think that what you do is when you go through the season that they had, what you do is you look at those and, and I'm pretty sure you've done it already done it. You look at his bad games. What happened against Dallas? What happened against the Saints? What happened? What are, what are the teams trying to do? What do they take away in order to make you struggle? So you look at those that game, those are the games that you go back and try to build upon. You see Jeremy Macklin, they bring him back on a one-year deal. Thought it was a good deal uh, with the injury pass that he's had. Uh, Macklin, they added him in with Riley Cooper and Deshaun Jackson. It looks like they have all the potential to be a prolific passing offense once again. How big would it be if Jeremy Macklin could stay healthy just because of the weapons and the diversity on the offense that it brings? Yeah, again, it goes back to that point I made earlier about when you have guys that can win their one-on-one matchups on the majority of the time, it it, it makes you uh, that much more prolific as an offense to be able to attack, attack, attack. Obviously, he wants to attack any way Chip does. So now that you put another weapon on the football field, you know, now who is my go-to guy on third down? Can you can you guess defensively who I'm going to? No, you probably can't because now I have three potential guys at the receiver position well, we haven't even thought about the tight ends yet. You know we guys have two um, quality tight ends um, that can line up at, and from the slot position as well. So you have a lot of weapons to throw in an offense, different packages to throw at a defense, at a, on, on a defense that can confuse 
So um, if he can stay healthy, and that's always uh, a caveat for any player in the National Football League, but I believe that he was he was going to have himself a, a breakout year last year, uh, in my opinion, in this offense. And you know the tight end position is changing. You look at guys, whether it's a Jimmy Graham or a Rob Gronkowski, and the Eagles have some athletic tight ends as well with Ertz and Selleck. As a defender, you see that the tight ends are getting quicker, faster. They're freaks of nature now, and they're running amazing 40 times in the combines. When you go up against a tight end like that, it has to be tough to game plan against them because most of these tight ends now have wide receiver speed. Well, it's not not just that. I I could could really care about care less about that is the fact that you can't touch him. You can't um, you can't hit him besides certain ways now and you saw the results of one of those hits um, T.J. Ward on Grock of tearing his knee. That's the way that you're going to be able to hit these guys. The only way you can truly hit them anymore. But that's the difference. I think that the guys that you say see playing these positions you, you know, they went on to really back in the day they were power forward. They were, you know, small forwards, but now they see on a, uh, another avenue to be able to, 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 to come in and play professional football instead of, you know, being maybe in the, um, maybe, maybe in the, uh, uh, the D leagues in basketball because of the rule changes. A few more questions with Brian Dawkins. He's joined us on the hotline right now. Zach Gelp here with you. Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP. And, Brian, the Eagles, they made some moves in for agency on the defensive side of the ball. We know their offense is going to put up points, but that defense has to improve. They bring in Malcolm Jenkins as well as Nolan Carroll this morning. Uh, w- when you look at the Eagles this year, after that Denver game where they allowed 50-plus points, the unit started to improve under Billy Davis. But what do the Eagles have to work on defensively and maybe add a few more pieces in free agency at? Well, they started in the right position, I believe, and, and giving a certain guy and Jenkins to come in, um, a guy that's very solid in what he does. And you know, listen to some of his, his interviews of even talking about some of the things he needs to improve on, which is tackling that shows you a guy that is um, very dedicated to his craft and getting better at it. So um, I think that that someone sitting a call a wise that can help you not have some of the mistakes that you had last year, communication-wise. Those are the type of things that helps the defense. It pulls the back end together, so everybody's in the exact same phase. If we call the wrong defense, and we're all playing the same wrong defense for that one snap, we're playing the right defense, because we're all doing the same thing. And so that's one of the things I think that he'll be able to bring to the table. I think that um, you know, adding depth at the cornerback position, adding depth at the outside linebacker position and all those things. What it does is it gives you the ability to go out and get turnovers because you have fresh guys coming in, you have great competition in training camp. And so that gives you the ability to put the best on the field. And what this team that did pretty good um, is turn the ball over, but it was really, you know, uh, back in the secondary, Brandon Wolfkins was the guy that really was the guy that was turnover machine as far as getting him um, in crunch time situations, you need that to start bleeding off on everybody. If everybody in the second there, especially in the safety position, I don't think they had no more than two interceptions from the two of them combined. That's something you can't have. You have to have uh, more turnover potential, game-changing potential from that position. Let's go around the league, and then uh, we'll let you run in two more questions as we're talking to Brian Dawkins. And, uh, Brian, you see this Patriots-Denver rivalry. It's uh, very fascinating. Obviously, it's headlined between Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, and they've had a pass throughout their careers here in the NFL. It went to the AFC Championship game this year. Denver edged out the Pats, and in that game, uh, Tlaib and Welker uh, had a little hit, and Tlaib missed the rest of the game. Now Tlaib goes out to Denver. They also bring in Demarcus Ware and T.J. Ward. John Elway's really done us in sensational job this offseason, and he's building this defense to make another run with under uh, number 18, Peyton Manning, as well. Yeah, and, I, and they understand the significance of what's going on right now. I don't know how long that Peyton is going to be able to play at the level that he's playing at. And so, when you have a Hall of Fame quarterback that's still playing at a Hall of Fame um, level, um, record-setting level of last year, you want to make sure that everything around him is leading and pointing in the right direction as far as getting us not just back there, but winning it next time. And so that's really what he's doing on the defensive side. And you look at the Super Bowl, it really, really wasn't the defense that they lost the Super Bowl, but he's saying that in order, in order for us to win 
some of the games that we may have to win this year. I want to be more stout on the defensive side of the ball because there were some problems on defense of getting off the football field, of containing uh, Russell Wilson on third down, getting off the football field. So you then put in DeMarcus Brown on one side, and if a healthy Vaughn Miller is on the other side, now you got yourself some uh, quandary as an offense. Who, who am I going to chip? Who am I going to double team? I can't double team them both. So that's going to uh, make this a, a very, um, a much different defense. And you add Ward in the back, veteran guy. Um, understands the mentality of owning the middle of the football field, but doing it with doing it with uh, uh, doing it under the rules, the way that they are today. Great addition to that football team because I think he's going to bring something in that secondary um, that will help those young guys because they have some young guys at the safety position that they can learn from it. The Pats, they answer back by bringing Darrell Rivas, who's one of the best corner, if not the best corner in the game. The debate's always fascinating between Rivas and Richard Sherman. I know Rivas was coming off the ACL injury. Now he's going to land in New England. Um, an old nemesis of his when he was playing back with the New York Jets. If you had to pick, because you're a great evaluator of talent, who the better corner is, Darrell Rivas or Richard Sherman, who do you lean towards? That's a tough question. And healthy, I'm, I'm going towards Rivas. Um, you know, coming back from an injury last year, it was it was uh, uh, it was a Sherman, in my opinion, was it was the better corner. But when Revis is a hundred percent, I consider him to be the best corner in football. That's just the way that I see it. That's just my opinion. I've been watching him, and he's a technician. And what he does, he's very patient at the line of scrimmage, and you know, he does a good job of, of never really panicking in, in, in situations. Richard does the same thing. He does it from a, a different vantage point. He uses his length um, a lot of times to uh, to ward off, um, you know, passes and all that stuff. He, he's another one that's not panic. So neither one, both of these guys, for young corners, they teach you how to play the game because they don't panic. They, they're very patient when they play and bump and run. They read your hips well. Whether you're a receiver sitting down to come do a comeback route, and they don't panic down the field. Well, Brian, we appreciate a few minutes today. Thanks so much. Everyone still loves you here in Philadelphia, and they always get a thrill when you come back to the stadium. Keep on doing a great job with ESPN, and uh, thanks for a few minutes, and let's talk to you again real soon. I appreciate it. Brian Dawkins right there, former Philadelphia Eagle from 1996 to 2008. We'll take a quick break here on the main event, WHIP Radio in Philadelphia. And when we get back, we have to do 